In today's video, we're going to talk about full range or setting a wide range or setting a narrow range, the difference between it all, how we think through it, how it affects the fees you generate and overall the returns you get on your DeFi portfolio, but also the downside as well as the upside. We're going to talk about it all. We have brought Colin Mason on the channel today. If you had the opportunity to learn from Colin, maybe you're in the UIG or you've consumed some of Colin's content, A, you guys give him more thumbs up and you like his videos more than mine, but I'm okay with it. Like I'm over it. But he is a great educator and has a way of explaining things and has all these metaphors that I always kind of joke about because he's just like the metaphor king. But I think he's got yeah. some good stuff for us today regarding full range, wide range, narrow range uh, pools. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I am kind of known as the the metaphor guy. But I mean, look, think of this, Luke. It's like this stuff is complex. Like this stuff yeah. is not easy to understand at the first time. And so if I can bring somebody something that we already no, we can already like we already know how this works. And then if I can bridge that gap, it'll make these really complex yep. concepts True. a lot easier to understand. True. So I yeah, I, I want to talk about I want to talk about liquidity distribution, full range, wide range. So now full range versus basically full range versus concentrated liquidity pools, and then breaking down concentrated down into wide range or narrow range, because there's a fundamental educational piece to this that we have to know before we just start deploying capital. So one of the biggest mistakes I see is just like, okay, I'm going to deposit some capital into really tight ranges like because the APR, because the APR is really high. And that's the worst thing that you can do if you don't understand this core concept. So yeah, I, I use I use icing, icing on a cake for the, for this example here. Um, hear me out. So if you have a thousand dollars worth of capital, let's just say, right, you're starting out like, okay, I want to get into a liquidity pool and provide these assets to a pool and earn the rewards that that are being generated by it, by it okay? So if I have $1,000 and I it's represented by a jar of icing, you can think of this as the jar of icing, the capital that you have is distributed out along the range that you've set. And so if we're talking about a full range pool, we're talking about providing that liquidity, providing that capital along the ticker, ticker um, uh, spots from zero to infinity. And so the way I like to think of this is that you're taking this jar of icing and you are spreading it on this massive seven layer wedding cake. And if you were to take that jar and spread it on seven layer wedding cake, it's a very, very thin layer of icing. So if you were to take a bite of that wedding cake, you'd be like, oh, there's a little icing on here. And that I like to think of a full range pool. Um, the, the rewards you earn are generally speaking much smaller. And that's if it's relying on the trading volume. Because remember, with the liquidity distribution, if it's a full range pool, everybody's providing liquidity at that at that full range. And so everybody's earning just a little bit of piece of the hint the, hint aerodrome is a little bit different for all you smarties. Go go yeah, Google yeah, yeah. how aerodrome works because there's some good full range opportunities there. Anywho, yes, not to get yes side, you're 100 percent right because it's it's based on a voting structure as opposed yeah. to trading volume, so that is a bit different. Um, but then the next, so the next phase of this, okay, that's a that's a full range pool. Jar of icing is spread out very thin along the entire range, which is zero to infinity. But some people might say, well, why would I want to provide zero to infinity? Like ETH, am I, I'm actually providing on that full range pool. I'm actually providing ETH liquidity at at 900,000 right now. ETH is 3,000. Why? Why would I want to provide liquidity over there? You know, and that's where very smart people created concentrated liquidity, which is the ability to provide that same jar of icing on a smaller surface area, which increases the layer of thickness that you're of the liquidity that is being distributed. So now we're talking concentrated liquidity pools where we are selecting what range we want to set um, and provide that liquidity for. So it might be 10 to 100. And so if that price of that asset stays between 10 and 100, I'll be generating fees. So let's say that 10 and 100 is a is a wide range. Well, it's very similar to taking that jar of icing and spreading it on a, maybe like a big birthday sheet cake, where it's the surface area is not as big as the seven layer wedding cake. Um, but you know, it's still wide, it's still a fairly big thing. And so if you were to take that jar of icing, Put it on that entire that big birthday cake, that sheet cake. If you were to take a bite of that cake, you would say, "Oh, this is a thicker layer of icing. It's the icing is more concentrated uh, in that surface area." Okay. Third thing is, okay, well, what if I set a narrow range? If if I'm getting eight percent APR on the full wide range, and then I were to concentrate the liquidity, and now I'm earning. Um, 90% APR, let's say, well, some people will be like, that's amazing. And I want to stay in range the longest and it's great. Other people will say, well, what if I tighten the range? I made it more narrow. Well, the more narrow you make it, the smaller surface area you have of this cake, to use my metaphor. So 
This concept is now taking that same jar of icing, the same capital, and putting it on a cupcake. And so now when you take a bite of that cupcake, you're going to say, whoa, like there's so much that the icing is so concentrated on such a small area that it, you're going to be generating more fees, right? Because the liquidity distribution is a lot tighter. Does that make sense? So downside to this. So everyone, so everyone's probably thinking, well, that's well, obvious that yeah. of course, of course, I would, I would just want the cupcake because I want it as thick as possible. Well, the concept here is that um, if you tighten your range and you have a narrow range and that price moves outside of the range, you're fully converted into the, uh, it's kind of hard to describe it, like the depreciating asset, if you will, um, the lower value of the assets. And then uh, two is you stop burning the fees. And so very similar to, and that's where I, my metaphor comes full circle is now if you were to eat that cupcake, it's probably going to disappear a lot faster. The ball and stole all the full. icing. Yeah. Right. In comparison to a full sheet cake, because that full sheet cake will take you longer to eat because, and think of that as like, if the range is wider, it might take yeah. you longer to get out of range comparison to a massive wedding cake, which you are never finishing that cake. Right. And that's the idea with that full range is you're not going to go out of range, but it's a very thin layer of icing. So I know it's weird. I know it's a, it's a, it's an interesting concept, but this is really important uh, to understand the, the liquidity distribution of your capital full range, wide range, narrow range. And so hopefully that brightens some value. I tonight. just keep thinking of a cake like when I was a kid and I'd always try to find the piece with the thickest icing or the most of that little fluff or the most uh, little extra on it. And then sometimes me and my sister would fight because I'd like with a little knife, like move some off her. So I almost see it like if you had a cake and you concentrate the liquidity over like maybe two slices, but now you're kind of like, well, what if, you don't get that slice and your sister gets the slice and now you got no fees. So that's the way I'm imagining. Right. It. Oh, that's either good. way. Yeah. It's the same idea. Like um, more risk, more reward, lower risk, less reward in a way. That's what we're fundamentally talking about. And now you can set the range, how active you want to be, et cetera, which I'm going to actually link out to a video call. And we did regarding um, kind of this concept, like how active do you want to get? How advanced do you want to right. get? How, how strategic do you want to get? I will link to that video out here, which came out probably a week or two ago. Uh, Colin, thanks for your time. If anything landed for anyone, do leave it in the comments. These videos are generated from questions that you leave in the comments. If you have any follow-up questions, I know this is sort of like more of the big basic beginner stuff, but we've yes. got an audience of a whole bunch of stuff from advanced leverage, lending, shorting, all the way to like, hey, how does liquidity actually work? And, and what's the liquidity distribution? And, and what does that even mean? So do let us know in the comments if you have any follow-up questions. And with that said, we're going to get out of here. Thanks. Let's go. All right. Dude, we're crushing. Yep. I got one more. If you're, yep. If you're TVL. TVL. So, so I don't know if this is how you want to present that or I could talk about it, but basically it derived from the APR, the return that I'm getting in my full range pool has dropped and I don't know why. So that was kind of the, the starting question. Yeah. And the, the answer was, well, the TVL increased. Got it. And so there's stuff that we could talk about with got that, it. but yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good topic to, yeah. to cover. Because volume could stay the same, but because TVL increased. Yes, it was technically on aerodrome, so it's more of the voting stayed right. the same, but the, the same concept applies. That if the volume stays, if it. the pizza remains the same, and there's just more people standing around the pizza, you get less of a slice. Now, Got it. So I, there are a lot of things I could talk about, but Love that's the, the essence. Got it. Okay. So let's say you're in a pool, you're in a position, you're earning a return, and all of a sudden over the month, you notice your returns are actually decreasing, yet like volume kind of still looks the same. And it's kind of like, what is going on? Should I get out of this? Should I not? I think it's important to understand what's actually going on behind the scenes. So as always, when we have a educational piece of content, we bring Colin on because he is the edu ed education extraordinaire. Say that Ooh, 10 times yeah. quick. Uh, Colin, what do you got for us? Yeah, this was actually a great question that I got in the accelerator program. So it's a group coaching program that I that I run. Um, actually, got a call here in a few hours. But let's go. Basically, the the question was posed for, "Hey, I'm in a full range pool, and this is on Aerodrome. So we'll, we'll talk about the difference between Aerodrome and Uniswap here in a minute. But I have a full range pool on Aerodrome, and the rewards that I'm earning per month drop from twenty percent per month to 13 percent per month and i don't know why why is the return percentage dropping because it's a full range pool i'm still in range like what what's going on here and so uh, a couple things that i wanted to look at so in my mind the first thing i went to was okay has the voting mechanism 
the vote has there been less votes for that pool on aerodrome so this is where i think i need to talk about um aerodrome versus uniswap aerodrome very quickly you don't earn rewards in the trading fees you earn them in aero which is the native uh, dex token for aerodrome and how you earn that arrow is based on a voting mechanism. So people who stake their arrow have voting rights to decide, hey, where should the arrow be distributed uh, in the decks? Hopefully it makes us, sense. Yeah. We have probably other videos. Yeah, we probably have other videos to go deeper into that. But the idea here is that, um, and I have a metaphor, Lucas, if you're okay with this. So it's, it's another very healthy one, uh, but it's, it's pizza, right? And so the idea here is that the pizza is representing the volume or the trading fees in, in this sense. So it's either the trading fees you're earning like on Uniswap or it's the voting mechanism, you know, earning a rewards on Aerodrome. So the concept here was, hey, what's why is my APR dropping when the pizza itself, when the volume or the emissions are not, they're, they're staying the exact same. Why am I earning less in rewards? And so the next thing I went to was, well, let's check out the TVL. The TVL is the total value locked. And that's basically how much capital investors have deposited into that pool. And so it's in a concentrated liquidity pool, it's going to be a little different because it depends on who's in range at that at that price. So it's a little bit different, but this was a full range pool. And so if the emissions have stayed the same, it's a full range pool. So so everyone is still in range. Like why are why are we earning less this week than we were last week? And so we looked at the next thing, which was the TVL. And so a funny metaphor I have is is the emissions is like a, a big pizza. So think of a big, large, extra large pizza with all the toppings you like. Mm. And this week there was six people standing around that pizza. And so that, especially on Aerodrome, those pizza slices were distributed to the the TVL owners, the six people standing around that pizza. But what happened, the shift was from last week to this week, three more people stood around that pizza. So now that that same pizza is being distributed to nine people. So if you were a simple math here, the slices that you would have would be less because it's distributed out to more people. So talk about liquidity again. The concept here is that the emissions stay the same. The range doesn't matter because it's a full range pool. So, so why is that changing? The thing that changed was the TVL. Mm -hmm. More millions and millions of dollars more in TVL were added to that pool since last week. Hence, why uh, APRs dropped. And so, there's a couple different things. So now, as you understand those concepts, look at your pools. And if you're asking yourself, well, why is this going up or why is this going down? Now you can start to look at. We're looking at the volume. That's usually the number one thing that changes. Right. It's the volume, um, or it's the um, the, the TVL, those are the two things that are really going to shift and change uh, in volume slash trading, the the voting rights uh, for Aerodrome. But same concept, trading fees, um, the volume and the uh, the TVL, that's what's going to shift. So hopefully I brought you a little bit of uh, insight into what we look at when yeah. things are shifting, because it's not just the DEX is telling you how much you're going to make. It's based on metrics, it's based on things that are happening. So hopefully, hopefully I brought you some value today. I think it's like what this reminds me of is being in a dark room, if you just woke up and you were in a pitch black room, you'd probably be freaked out. But turn the light on, a little more knowledge, a little more understanding yes. of what's actually happening, not so scary. And even if the light turned off again, you probably wouldn't be as terrified because you'd still kind of remember where things are at and you could fumble your way through the room. And I, I look at knowledge and understanding of like, okay, so something changed in my portfolio. I have no freaking idea why and things are in the red. So I just sell everything and I take a loss. It's like, that's what most people do. But if you understand maybe the economy, what's happening in the macro, what's happening in crypto, the narratives, now you start understanding how a DEX and how even tokens and coins actually work behind the scenes. It's like, oh, this is a great buying opportunity. Everyone's freaked out. But I know this is a good buying opportunity because I have more knowledge. Or ah, I'm actually selling here. I don't mind locking in a loss, but it's a educated decision. I think most people in this space are just effed. So if you want to learn more, uh, subscribe to this channel because we do a video every single day. Plus, we now have an audio experience that releases also every single day, five minutes or less. CryptoLabsResearch.com forward slash podcast. Do check it out. Um, you will notice that within a month or two, you start having very different higher level conversations and you won't even be fully conscious you're doing it. It's just going to be more wisdom and knowledge is going to be in your brain and and you'll do better as an investor, which is our ultimate mission. Whether you pay us or not, we'd love to have you in the UIG because we can actually work with you. But either way, we just want you becoming better investors. So subscribe to this channel, subscribe to the podcast. And with that said, if you liked Colin's beard and his speech and teaching here, do like the video, subscribe to the channel. And with that said, we'll see you in the next one.